Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at how we can convert our existing asynchronous completion handler based methods into something that uses Swift's new structured concurrency with async await. And we will also be handling the errors by throwing some errors. So we would be doing an async await and throw. So without any further ado, let's get started. So let me show you the sample project that I've put together in Xcode Playground. Now the first thing you'll notice is that there is a URL called post URL and it points to this JSON placeholder API which I've used in my previous videos as well. So it has a user ID, ID, title and body. Uh, so we're just going to be trying to decode this data today by fetching this data from this endpoint. So above here you can see the post object that I've created which only has an ID and title because we are not really doing a JSON decoding tutorial here. And another thing that I want you to see is this post fetch error which is of type Swift error. And it has two cases, invalid data and decoding failed. This is just to demo the failure cases. Of course, there will be other failure cases as well. But for this tutorial, we'll just be demoing these two error cases. Now, this is our networking function. It's called get posts uh, and it completes with a result type of success and failure. Here, success is an array of post objects, which is what we have created here. And the error is of type post fetch error. And so this error has to conform to Swift error, which we have done here as well. Inside of the function, we first create a task using URL session shared data task. We pass this URL that we have created. Inside of the closure, we are just capturing the data. Uh, there is also a response and error, but we will not be handling that in this tutorial. We first try to unwrap data using the new shorthand syntax for guardlet unwrapping. So we use guardlet data else complete with a failure case of invalid data. And similarly, we try to decode these objects into posts, which is uh, of type and array of post. And if it again fails to decode, then we uh, post a failure type saying decoding fail. And if all of that succeeds, we complete with a success case and we pass this array of post object back. And so here we just call the function and inside of the closure, we switch over the result type and uh, we switch the success type and we get the post and its associated value for the enum. We just print out the title of the post and in failure, we print out the error. So as you can see here, this function runs and it returns me the title of the post because I've done a compact map here just to print out all the titles. Now, before we get started with uh, converting this method into something that uses a sync await and throw, I'd like to tell you one of the biggest pitfalls that we have with using completion handlers. Now, if you take a look here in this guard let, it is very easy for me to forget completing this on this return path. Otherwise, what would happen is if I simply return, this function would never complete and it would just be suspended somewhere in memory. Similarly, with guardlet post as well, if this decoding fails and I forgot to complete it with the failure case, it would return, but it would never complete the function and hence the function would be suspended somewhere in memory. So that is something that async await really fixes because you will not be able to come out of the function unless you return something or you throw an error. So let's get started by converting this get post function into something that uses async await throw. So first let me write the function definition, then I'll explain it. So I've created a function here that is asynchronous and it throws an error. And if it is successful, it will return me an array of posts. So let's start by writing the first line in this function. So the first line I've written here is to try and await the result from URL session shared dot data from this post URL. Again, we are reusing this post URL from here. And this function will return me two items in the form of a tuple. That is why I've unwrapped it using a tuple. Now, of course, the response object is something that you can handle by converting it to an HTTP response. But for this tutorial, we will not be handling that. So I will just change that to an underscore. So the next thing is we want to decode this data into a form that looks like a list of posts. So if you look at this line, it's very similar to what we had inside of a completion based uh, method as well. However, here we are simply trying, we are not doing any guard let sort of thing. Again, here, if JSON decoder throws an error, it will throw it because of try and then we can catch it and we can handle it on our call side. Now, as you see here, this is a significantly simpler function than the one that we had written here. It's very linear. It's just three lines. There's no nesting of any sort. And the errors are also handled on every return path. So unless you throw an error or return an object of your return type, you will never be able to come out of this function. So this ensures a very high level of safety inside of your code. So now that we've created this function, let's try to call it and let's also try to handle the errors. Now I've created a task wrapper here and inside of that, I am going to do a do try catch. Now this is because as I showed here, this method can throw an error from either its URL session fetching or its JSON decoding fetching. So we need to handle that error. Now in the first catch block, I have checked that if the error is of type post fetch error. And if it is so, I will just switch over it and I'll be able to handle my individual cases. So I have invalid data as well as decoding fail. 
And now since I've handled my custom error, uh, which is of type post fetch error, I will simply just catch all the other types of error, which will conform to uh, Swift error. And I'll just print out the localized description. So now we have been able to do a do try catch uh, and we handle the uh, custom error as well and we handle all the other errors and now we get access to the post variable inside of the do block now we can simply compact map its title and we can print that out and that's it you can see how much cleaner and robust the code is here because you're doing proper error handling and you're able to get access to your variable without having to go through a bunch of closures now let's just run this once and quickly check if we are getting the same result as before and there we go, we get the exact same result as before, but this time using our uh, async await uh, throw function. So that's been it. Thank you so much for watching this video on converting your existing completion handler based code into something that uses async await and throw. I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you appreciate how much async await and throw helps us in writing more safe code and more linear code. If you have any questions regarding the code or this concept in general, please feel free to leave a comment down below. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this in the future, please subscribe to the channel. And that's been it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you soon in the next one.